It's been almost three weeks, or even three weeks to the day since I last uploaded on this channel. I think it's the longest I've ever gone without making a video since I started this channel back in 2017. And unfortunately, the title of this video speaks for itself. I'm just fed up. I am deflated, uninterested, disappointed and almost completely disillusioned with Charlton Fraser Football Club. I have other excuses for not uploading besides this exam season when it comes to uni now and enjoying other things in life because I don't think at this point in my life especially now I can really get worked up or let what's going on um, affect me because unfortunately that I, I, I let it go to heart way too easily when it comes to this sort of stuff it affects my mood quite badly and I kind of need to shake away from that really because it's just becoming a norm now really quite frankly I, I, I'm just enjoying other things in life you know because I think there are more things that are important if I'm quite honest with you and don't get me wrong it is horrible to say that it is absolutely horrible because I love this club I absolutely adore it like Charlton till I die but right now I think myself and a lot of Charlton fans probably feel the same way in that we're just not really interested and are seriously debating not renewing season tickets next season. I don't think there's ever been such a lack of connection when it comes to this club and the fans than there has been for a long time. And to be fair, I'm hardly surprised under this regime. I'm hardly surprised. So today, I'm going to have a go at discussing it. I think I did a similar video last season discussing how much of a mess this club is in. And I'm doing it again. And I cannot believe I'm doing it again. I did not think that we could get it so wrong this season after the season we've had last year. But boy. I mean, I predicted us to finish ninth at the start of the season. I wasn't that optimistic. I felt that with the squad that we had, I felt that we would potentially push up the table a little bit under Ben Garner at the time. And even that was an overestimation. Because we're 16th. We're 16th. 34 games into the season. 12 games to go. 10 wins. 11 draws. 13 losses. Negative goal difference. Winless in four games without scoring a goal. In either of those four games. Our last goal came against Forest Green. In a 1-0 win. A 1-0 win against bottom of the league. Who outplayed us in the second half of that game. What's the problem? What's gone wrong? I'll tell you what's gone wrong. The club is rotten to the core. It is done. I said it after our defeat to Plymouth Argyle. Club is rotten. Completely rotten. And we need a hard reset. Something that we didn't do last season. That we should have done. And we didn't. So what's the problem? I'll tell you what isn't the problem, for one. And I cannot believe I'm even going to mention this. I cannot believe I'm even going to say it. Because there are, <laughs> there are some fans that genuinely think that this is the main... Like, that, that, that this is the problem based on recent events. And I just can't believe it. It's the manager. It has never been the manager's problem this season. Not once. Might be an interesting take, but that's my opinion. It's never been the problem. What's been the problem? I'll tell you what's been the problem. The owner, the recruitment team and the players that wear this shirt. That wear, that represent that badge there. That's the problem. That's where the issues lie. Not with the manager. Because at what point do we sit there and go, OK, enough's enough. Because we cannot keep cutting and changing managers when problems go wrong and blaming them for problems that are far beyond that. The problem is way beyond the manager. It has never been the manager's fault. It wasn't Ben Garner's fault and it's not ben Dean Olden's fault. Again, might be an interesting take because, yes, under Ben Garner... 
when he came in, could you say that, or, or would you define his Cholton, his time at Cholton, his style of play at Cholton as being attacking football, the attacking style of play and philosophy that he said that he would install? You'd have to say no. You, you would have to say no. A bar a couple of occasions, you know, the 5 1 thrashing against Plymouth, the 3 0 win over Pompey. Uh, you could maybe throw the Exeter game in there as well, and we won 4 2. It's just those couple of occasions, but I wouldn't define Garner's time as being the attacking style of play that he wanted to install at this club that we were all excited about going into the season. Or a couple of us, anyway. I certainly was. But the truth is, with Garner, he was sold a dream before coming to this club. I said it after he got sacked. Like, we paid Swindon off. We paid them off to bring him here on a long-term contract as a project. Like, Sangard bigged up our transfer budget. Yeah, we've got the fourth biggest budget in the league. Don't worry, you have money to spend. And then did not spend any money at all. We went shopping in Poundland for players that are out of contract in the summer at League 2 clubs. League 2, Premier League loans. And... Realise way too late, once again, that, oh, our squad's really short in a number of areas. Let's panic at the last minute and try and sign a player, then fail to sign that player, and then make the same mistake we did last year. Going into the free agent market, searching for players that no one wants and has been without a club since the summer. And then when the problems arise, when the squad is so underprepared and underwhelming as it is, the first person you naturally blame when it comes to results not going your way is the manager. And it's wrong when it comes to this club in this current moment. I still stand by it now. Ben Garner's sacking was premature. Was a very premature decision and a disgusting decision. Because he was not given the right time to build his style. To build his squad up and set the foundations for the future. Again, might be an interesting take because some fans... Really seem to talk him down. Obviously, he's recently just been appointed as the Colchester United manager. And Charlton fans have been jumping on the back saying, oh, prepare some for some underwhelming football. I think it's a great appointment for Colchester. Like, considering what he'd done at Swindon, when we signed him from Swindon, the job he did there was brilliant. And I wish him all the best at Colchester. Of course, our assistant manager, Scott Marshall, who obviously came with Ghana, um to Charlton from Swindon, has gone back with Ghana to Colchester. So he's now left the club. I wish Garner all the best. Because he was not given the right time. He wasn't given the time. No, the tr that, that's the truth. That is, that is the truth. And my opinion. You can say whatever you want. But that's what I think anyway. And then Dean Olden's come in. Full credit to him. Like, I think he's been a breath of fresh air. I really do like Olden. I really do. I didn't think I'd take to him so quickly. I did think it was an underwhelming appointment at the start. But I felt... Mostly, he's got the confidence out of a couple of players. But then again, if you look at our league position, you probably have to say we haven't really improved under Holden. And that's what some people seem to think. You know, they seem to think, oh, because like, obviously Holden's been linked with the Oxford United job recently. He's been linked with every single vacant job under the sun because he was brought in to facilitate the Charlie Meffin takeover, which has now collapsed and we now have to ask questions to Thomas Sangard, like, why did you do it? I'm glad he did it. Don't get me wrong. I didn't want Method to take over the club whatsoever. And there's still the whole legal proceeding going on there. But you've got to ask questions to Sangard now. Like, why at the last minute? Why do you want to keep a stake in the football club? Do you actually want to sell the club? Who do you intend to sell it to? It's these questions that need answering. Every single personnel that was brought in, uh, along with Holden, you know, the likes of Andy Scott, Jim Rodwell, Ed Warwick, they're all gone now except for Holden. Holden is contracted until the end of the season and he's sitting there going, like, what's going on? Because his future is undetermined. Because he's out of contract at the end of the season, you know, there's talks of like, oh, his agent is talking up, obviously, because apparently Oxford were, uh, had submitted an approach to Charlton for Dean Holden. Then that was according to TalkSport. And then Richard Corley came out and said, oh, the club haven't been approached. So obviously the agent's doing all the talking. And about a, about a month ago, we was under the impression that Holden didn't have an agent. It's like, what's going on? Like, it, it, Literally, you've just got to laugh or you'll cry. Like, Holden has been linked with every single vacant job going that has been available. You know, Huddersfield, which is now obviously Neil Warnock's uh, job. QPR, which is now Gareth Ainsworth. And then Oxford recently, which he's still being linked with now. 
And there's people sat there on Twitter and via direct message to me saying, oh yeah, holding out. He's tactically inept. He's not playing out best players. Really? Like, really? You seriously suggesting that Holden is the problem? It's part of the reason why I just don't have the motivation to do this. Holden is our fifth different manager in two and a half years. In the two and a half years that Sangard's been. Technically speaking, the eighth different person on different occasions, should I say, to become manager. I mean, think about it. Lee Bowyer. And then he left. We had Johnny Jackson as caretaker for one game, yes. Nigel Adkins. Jackson as caretaker again, then permanently. Then Ben Garner. Then he got sacked, replaced by Anthony Hayes as caretaker. And now Dean Holden. At what point do we say enough is enough? We cannot keep cutting and changing managers without giving them the time to build and to set the foundation. We didn't do that with Ben Garner. And in all honesty, we're set to do that with Dean Holden. Because honestly, I'm going to call it right now, Dean Holden will not be Charlton manager by the end of this season. He'll walk. And who can blame him? What manager in their right mind would come to this football club in the state that it's in now? Under an ownership that has no interest in investing. We don't even know what they want to do with the club right now. Like, yes, I understand for business perspectives, oh, I want to break even, but it's, it's, un, it's an unrealistic target and we are feeling the repercussions of it because we are arguably doing worse than what we did last season. And last season was our worst season on record. The most amount of defeats we've ever had in the third tier. 21 losses. 21. We are 16th. 34 games into the season. We're nine points off relegation. We could still go down. Like it's, it's unbelievable that I'm saying that. I don't think we will. I don't think we'll be dragged into that position. Because ultimately, we are probably the most average League One team going. We're not that bad to go down, even though it's still mathematically possible. But we are absolutely way behind the top six. I mean, look at the table. We're 19 points off sixth place Barnsley. That says it all. The golfing quality between the top six and our lot is staggering. And it's the ownership and the recruitment team to blame for that. Because they don't invest. They give false promises to the managers, to Garner, to Holden. Let's face it, the January Trent winner that's just happened has probably made very little difference when it comes to this squad. Let's be honest. If anything, it could, it could arguably have got worse. And there's people suggesting, oh yeah, Holden's got to go. He's tactically inept. Yes, okay, you can kind of criticise some of the decisions. I don't understand why he's gone to a back five in the last few games. I don't know why he's still persisting with Macaulay Bond. You know, the guy's played nine games. He's been caught offside nine times. He's been yellow carded three times. He's had five shots in his entire Charlton career since coming back. He has hit the post once. The guy can't hit a barn door. Then again, the striker department is a shambles in itself. Our best striker is Miles Lieburn, who is probably only impactful off the bench. Chuck Sanike is out for the remainder of the season. He will go down as one of the worst signings in the club's recent history. Re-signing in for 300k, that is. I can criticise Holden's decision to go to a back five. I think a 4-3-3 or a 4-4-2 is probably the best way to go. I will criticise that. However, he should not be sacked. People need to understand that. If he goes, we're done. Because realistically, who's next in line? Who's next? Who can we realistically appoint that will make this better? Because let's be honest, if Holden goes right now, we're giving the job to Anthony Hayes on a temporary basis. It would not make sense to appoint someone on a permanent deal right now with the club's current situation. And we know full well from his time as caretaker that Anthony Hayes is not good enough. He's not ready for the step to become manager. In my opinion, we've got to stick with Holden. Like I say, I think he's been a breath of fresh air and I think he, I think he, the man deserves the chance or a manager deserves the chance to build, to set a foundation, to build the squad that he's got, to, that he wants, should I say. Because let's be honest, he's inherited a squad that's not his. He's inherited Ben Garner's team. And you could arguably say that's not even Ben Garner's team. 
because he did not get the investment in the summer. Like I say, we went shopping in Poundland for League Two expiring contracts, Premier League loans, and free agents that no one wants. He needs time to build his team. And that's a mistake that we did, that we made from this season, from last season, going into this year. Because let's be honest, half of the squad, or more than half of the squad, that we regarded as the worst Charlton side we've ever seen is still here. And they still will be here with a couple of players coming back from loan and that. People blaming the manager. Unfortunately, people may not like to hear this, but you've got to sit there and say that about 80 to 85% of the players that are currently playing for this club are nowhere near good enough. Some of them don't even deserve to be in League One. Some of them are, are out on loan in League Two for a reason. Some of them are on loan to the bottom half of League One for a reason, because they are that quality of players. They are mid-table quality players, apart from a select few. Honestly, it's got to the point now where I don't care who stays and goes in the summer. We need a massive hard reset. We need, it, we need what we did the season we won the league. Just close up shop, get rid of everyone. Everyone is for sale. Everyone must go and replace the squad. What did we do last season? Gave contracts to players that should not be here right now. You know full well who I'm talking about as well. Keep half of the squad that we regard as the worst Charlton squad ever. And look what happens. I'm not even surprised. We need a hard reset. It's honestly got to that point now where I just don't care what happens now. I don't care who goes. I don't care who stays. Well, I say I don't care who stays. I just said that 85% of the squad's not good enough. And that's the truth. They are not good enough. Half of them don't even want to be here. Because half of them won't be here come the end of the season because they're out of contract. They just look like they don't want to be here anymore. Honestly, for the next 12 games of the season, I don't care. Throw the academy boys out there because at least they want to prove a point. The likes of Miles Lieburn, Lucas Ness, Daniel Carnu, Ashley Maynard Brewer, who actually care about this club because they want to prove a point. They want game time. The senior players just look like they don't want to be here. And you know what? To most of them, you can go. Like I say, most of them don't even deserve to be in this league. They should not be in this division. But I'm sick and tired of people just blaming the manager and people wanting him gone. Like I said, if Holden goes, who do we replace him with? We can't replace him with anyone because we're not a big club anymore. We never were a big club. We're, we're not an, that attractive of a team. We are a mid-table League One team with a dead ownership that doesn't invest, a recruitment team that is made up of Steve Gallen that has not brought a decent talent to the club in a number of years, and Martin Sangard, Thomas Sangard's son, who's even more inexperienced than his dad. How he's, in, how he's still got an authoritative position in the club, I cannot even begin to explain. I just don't get it. And no wonder the team's gone to shambles, because it's them that's the recruit in the players that are not good enough. The club does not have that reach anymore. I think I'm allowed to have that expectation that we should be doing a lot better than what we should, because ultimately we are one of the biggest clubs in this league, as much as some people don't want to believe that, aimed mostly at the Plymouth fans on social media after the defeat on Saturday. <laughs> Saying that we're not a big club, like we're not compared to the likes of Sheffield Wednesday, Derby and Ipswich, which to be fair, I agree with. Like We're not as big of a club compared to them, but we're still probably arguably top six biggest clubs in this league, in terms of history, that is, anyway. But we just don't have that appeal anymore. Like, we've spent more seasons in League One than we have the Championship over the last 10 years. We are a mid-table League One club. That's what we are. We shouldn't be that. We should not be that. But unfortunately, that's what we are. And this club will not go anywhere until we give manager the time Give Dean Olden the time to build his own team and build his foundation and set the building blocks in stone for next season because we will be in League One for next season and probably the foreseeable future. Hard reset on the squad. Get rid of every. Get rid of almost everyone. Like I, I, like I say, I don't care who goes at this point. Rethink recruitment and Thomas Sangar has to sell the club. 
he has to go. Like, it, it's as simple as that now. It's done. Like, he, he has to go. But the ultimate thing is, this connect, the, like, is, is the, the land. This club will not fully progress until Roland de Chatelet's connection with this club is completely gone. History. The next owner that comes into this club has to make buying the real estate, the valley and the training ground their main priority. End of. End of. This club will not progress until all of the club's assets are under one roof, under one ownership. And that is why, people, I am just completely disillusioned with the club. I don't care. We've got 12 games to go to the end of the season and they mean nothing. It's the same thing I had last year. Like, go into games where they just don't mean anything. Like, I went to Cambridge United away last year. It was a really good day out. Like, I, I, I don't even... Speaking of away days, I don't even have the same enjoyment for that anymore. I can't justify spending loads of money as a uni student to go to away games. Yes, they're good days out, but ultimately, I'm going to watch the football. And the football is dross. Like, I can't justify it. Like I was just saying, last season I went to Cambridge United away. Great away great away day, good day out. Not a bad little League One ground. I like those classic grounds or old, older fashioned grounds. We beat them 2 0 and I went out of the game and, like, yeah. Like, it, it, I walked out of the ground genuinely feeling like we'd lost the game. We'd won 2 0. It meant that little. I just want it to mean something. You know, when we go to games and we win games. And I just don't feel that anymore. And it is absolutely devastating. I'm, I'm, I'm devastated to say it. But I'm just so deflated with this club over the next, last two years. And it will continue. If things just don't change. In regards to the ownership. It's not Dean Alden's fault. If he goes to Oxford. And I, I'll, I will applaud him off. I'll say, do you know what, mate? Fair play. You made the right decision. Because Oxford are a better run club than us. But if he goes, we're done. We are finished. I, I don't know what else to say. Like, the club is just absolutely finished. We're 16th in League One. Like, I cannot believe I'm even saying it. I just hope that we can pull something together or these players just get a rocket up the arse and just be like, what are you doing? Half of you are playing for a job next season for stability for job security and half of you don't even look like you want to be at this club looking at our next 12 games our next three games specifically Accrington Morecambe and Cambridge three teams fighting relegation this season we need seven points minimum we should be beating teams like that if you look at our run the last 12 games beyond that you've got two tough games after those three with Wickham and Shrewsbury two teams fighting promotion then you've got Bristol Rovers who are sort of mid-table they've been hit a bad run of form of late Burton who are in the relegation scrap, even though they've improved form. Ipswich, who are arguably the toughest opponent we have to play for the remainder of the season. They're fighting for promotion or for playoffs. MK Dons, relegation. Morecambe, relegation. Port Vale, mid-table. And Cheltenham away, final game of the season, relegation. Arguably, our run for the last 12 games is not too bad in regards to teams we have to play. Most of them are teams we should be beating. End of. It's got to this point now. I think... Haddock the Addict said it um, in a preview for the Plymouth game. If you haven't seen his videos, check it out, by the way. Very good stuff. Really enjoyed his videos of late. We've just got to throw the kitchen sink at it. Just do whatever. The senior players clearly don't care. So let's just say sod it. Just experiment. Bring the academy players into the game. You know, play the likes of Carnu and other players. I don't know, like Clayton and Henry. Like I don't know. Just give it a go. Just, just give it a go. Because the senior players... Half of them, or most of them, just don't care anymore. They don't look like they want to be at the club. So at this point, just sod it. Just go for it. The last 12 games, most of the teams in that we should be beating. But as much as I don't think many of us want to admit it, even though we are mid-table and you could probably say, oh yeah, we'll be alright. We can still mathematically go down. Nine points. The run of form we're on right now, Four games without a win, without scoring a goal in that time. It's a concern. It's a huge concern. But I don't know, man. <laughs> like I said, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. But I can't even laugh and I can't even cry. Like I am just almost completely done with it. Almost completely disillusioned. 
and deflated and uninterested with this club. I don't know, man. It's just, uh, like I say, like, I, it, is, it is devastating to say it, you know, because I do genuinely love this club. Some of you may question that after this video, but I do genuinely, like, I, I love it. Charlton Athletic is, it's me, you know, like, that's my club. And I just cannot stand it being destroyed season after season because we just get passed down to every single chancer and wrong one that's in line. And I fear that the next person that comes in after saying God, if he does sell the club, will also be of the same nature. And I hope I'm wrong, man. This club has got to turn a corner now and we've got to get out of the dark times and hopefully bring some success back. Not that we've had much success over the last hundred or so years, but yeah. That's all I've got to say, really. Um, it's, it's not been an easy video to make and certainly not one I wanted to make for my return to YouTube after a quite a long break, which I do. I've, I must have apologised so many times over the last over this season. Um, but I, I am I am genuinely sorry that I just have not made videos. I just haven't had the time mostly, but it's also because I don't have the motivation at the moment. I, I I will do the best I can to continue to make videos from this point on, but it, it's like I say, I just I'm just not very interested in the club right now, and I just I, I I like everyone, I like every Charlton fan just want to see change, to want to see us progress up the table, to want to see better football on the pitch because we're just not seeing that right now. It's a shambles. The only thing I'm going to do now, back Dean Olden. Because that's that's what we have to do. Like we can't we can't sack him. We can't keep cutting and changing managers. It's as simple as that. The players, as much as I want most of them gone, we have got to get behind them. Because uh, hurling abuse at them and that, you know, it's just their confidence is already shot to pieces. It's not going to help. You know, I'm going to get behind them and I'm going to do all I can. But like I say, most of them just don't care. And that's it. That's all I've got to say, really. I'm going to end it here. Thank you for listening to me, chatting away about my feelings, and hopefully you guys can, I don't know, whether you can kind of take them on board or what I'm really trying to say is uh, let me know how you feel, really. Just let me know how you feel. Do you feel the same way as me? Do you think I'm just being a negative a negative prick? <laughs> just Whatever. Just let me know in the comments below, and I'll try to read through them. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you did like it, I'd appreciate if you would leave a like on this video. Subscribe if you are new to the channel. Turn on post notifications so you're notified every time I upload a new video. We are tantalisingly close to 4,000 subscribers. I think we're five away now, which is insane. So if we can get to that, that'll be incredible. This has been Tyler Ronenson. Have a nice day and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe and I'll see you all later. <sighs> it is devastating to be so deflated with this club, but hopefully things will change. Let's be real. Come the summer, when pre-season comes rolling around, the excitement will be come back. All to be disappointed all again. <laughs> That's probably what it will be. Charlton till I die.